it gives me immense delight to record this video because it tells about the journey of the son of a maid servant to the status of a devarshi this is the moving tale of narad muni as narrated in shrimad bhagavatam it was early morning the sun had not yet risen ved vyas the renowned author of the puranas and the mahabharata compiler of the vedas in their present form the father of dhritarashtra pandu and vidur had just finished his ablutions in the sacred waters of the river saraswati he sat alone under the dense foliage of a large banyan tree the extensive crown of the tree shone with the transparent pink of its new leaves its bark was silvery and smooth and its aerial roots looked like strands of pink cotton extending earthwards infinitely an immortal sitting under an immortal tree Ved Vyas was lost in contemplation of the events of his life. He had led the honest life of a celibate till ordained by his mother Satyavati to beget sons from the widow of his brother Vichitra Virya. Of skin he was dark and therefore called Krishna Dwaipayana that is the dark skinned one brought up on an island. After he edited the Vedas he came to be known as Vyas. the knowledge contained in the vedas was not accessible to women the shudras and the fallen of the higher castes for them he had composed the great epic mahabharata which offered equivalent and immense knowledge to everyone without making any distinction of sex creed and class yet somehow he felt incomplete in his, this moment of self doubt and questioning vyas noticed a figure carrying a veena on his arm approaching instantly the rishi recognized devarshi narad and stood up to welcome him as if a devata had arrived as an atithi the descriptions are marvelous touching why do you look so disturbed and ill at ease rishi vyas asked the smiling narad you have composed the mahabharat an amazing book of knowledge and history it is an epic that contains the bhagavad gita the song celestials told by krishna himself why then is the discontent writ large on your face what more of knowledge you can disseminate there is no greater life than that you have lived replied vyas devarshi you were born from the mind of brahma you wander the entire universe like the sun through your yogic powers you know what transpires in the minds of others i have conquered the knowledge of the world i learned the truth of existence and what lies beyond yet i feel that there is something lacking what could it be your knowledge is incomplete because you have not related it to bhagwan said narad you are dissatisfied because your shastras do not encompass the world of devotion to krishna the written word with ras bhav and an alankar is wanting if there is an absence of devotion of faith of total surrender to bhagwan vasudev now look at my life the devarshi continued In my earlier life I was born to a maid servant working in the household of a brahmin well versed in the vedas at a young age I too was pushed into the service of the family I was not a naughty child I was soft spoken and not interested in games I wasted no time at all times either I worked to serve the family of the brahmin or listened to fascinating stories about lord krishna the latter habit purified my intellect my devotion to krishna made me humble i was able to discipline my senses i became obedient and thoughtful in my activities you too can overcome your doubts if you follow this path of devotion to krishna here is a message in bhakti ras vyas looked at the frangipani flowers going all around 
There were blooms of several colors ranging from pink to deep crimson, but more commonly white petals with a yellow center. A strong fragrance pervaded the ashram. The rishi derived aesthetic satisfaction from the subtle inner coloring of the flowers and an artist's shape and form of the leaves. But this was a momentary distraction. He could absorb the lovely sight in his mind's eye and continue with the conversation. Devarshi, you were so young at that time. What happened to the Brahmin family? Kal destroys everyone. How did you grow up? You too must have died. How did you attain such knowledge as made you so respected in a later life? Narad thought for a moment. Then said, I was the only son of my mother. She was an illiterate woman and a dasi. I had no one to look towards for support. For her, I was the center of her universe. Yet she was helpless because she did, she did not have the means to help me improve my lot. One night when I was five, my mother ventured out of the house at night to milk the Brahmin's cow and died of snake bite. So the child was left an orphan. That is sad. Observed Vedvyas. He knew suffering. He had seen it all, even the destruction of his progeny at the hands of each other in the battle of Kurukshetra. I left the village, continued Narad. I travelled north. I wandered through rich towns, prosperous villages, crossed rivers, forests and orchards. I came across wandering tribesmen with the herds of cattle. I saw large trees which had been partly uprooted by elephants, ponds where thousands of lotuses bloomed. I noticed the hovering black bees. In jungles and gardens I heard diverse bird calls. I was just a child. Yet I wondered at the diversity of creation. Ved Vyas was all attention. I was alone, said Narad. At one stage I lost my path and entered a dense jungle teeming with ferocious wildlife. The bamboo grooves touched the sky and darkened the interior. Even sunlight could not filter through the dense trees growing close to each other. I saw reptiles, owls, lions, tigers, hyenas. Once when I was exhausted, I rested on a river bank. Had a bath, made a meal of fruit which I could reach with my tiny arms. I took shelter under the people trees and meditated upon Paramatma, who had never deserted me. My craving for him was so intense that I shed tears. I sought help. In my dhyan, I had a vision of the omnipresent Bhagwan, just the way I had worshipped him. Yet this vision did not last. Continued Narada, his poignant tale, yet full of devotion. I continued to pray and seek that darshan again, but instead of a vision, I heard my inner voice speaking on his behalf. Child, it said, in this life you may never see me again the way you did, but continue in your effort. A devotee in his efforts to seek me gives up all worldly attachments. Unless this happens, none can reach me. A lifetime might not be enough. However, I am with you all the time. Ved Vyas, one of the greatest thinkers of all times, listened in rapt attention. The Almighty wanted a continuous effort to be good from a devotee. Think over this idea. A lifetime of effort is needed. One lifespan might not be enough. However, goodness has its own reward. Narad said, I died in due course as everyone has to. Later, when Brahma was creating this universe once again, I too was created along with Marich and other rishis. Since then, I freely wander in all the three worlds, playing Veena and praying to God. I can play all the seven notes on the Veena, notes created by Bhagwan himself. In music, I sing about God, His Leela and His kindness and love for everyone. 
I close my eyes and find God near me. How true. You can also do it. I do it. I have not seen God, but I know He is near me. I am God. Narad says, God is kindness personified. Maharshi, you are pure. Evil has never entered your thoughts. Hence, I have narrated to you how I attained His blessings. Absolute devotion is the key to Him. Purification of thought is an instrument. Look at the creation around you and admire the one who created it. Very wise words. Practical, easy to follow, easy to act upon. Participate in the spectacle of life, continued Narada. You will not be disappointed. You will be relieved of that feeling of a lack of fulfillment because there would be nothing left to fulfill. Great logic, but true. So saying, Narad walked away with his fingers playing on the veena. He did not say for refreshments. Ved Vyas brooded over what might have been left unsaid in his monumental works. A breeze soaked in the scent of frangipani blew over him. The sun had risen. His writing awaited him. Jai Sri Krishna. Jai Sri Krishna. Jai Sri Krishna.